Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in His Word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. I'm from Kentucky, and for some reason, many of the towns in that state are named for large cities elsewhere. We have a London and a Paris, both small towns, though when I was in college, London, Kentucky was one of the biggest towns in the area. Even Florence, my hometown, though large for Kentucky, couldn't compare it to its European counterpart. So I don't know why, when I drove through the tiny community of Antioch, Kentucky, I equated it in my mind with the Antioch of the Bible and thought Antioch was a small town. But in studying the book of Acts, I found out that this city of Antioch, which figures prominently in the early church, was actually the third largest city in the Roman Empire, after Rome and Alexandria. It was the capital city of the Syrian province, about 300 miles north of Jerusalem, and it became God's hub for the Gentile church. Paul, Barnabas, Titus, John Mark, Luke, Silas, and Peter all had connections with the church of Antioch. It all started during the persecution of Christians after Stephen's martyrdom. Some Jewish Christ followers moved to Antioch and shared the gospel with the synagogues there. Gentiles also heard the gospel and believed, a great number of them. Why? Because it says in Acts 11.21, the hand of the Lord was with them. It was no accident that Gentiles would want to know the gospel. Though they didn't put the news on Facebook or Twitter, somehow word got back to the believers in Jerusalem. The church leaders, wanting to make sure that all new believers received good, sound doctrine, sent Barnabas to Antioch. Remember him, a Levite from Cyprus who sold property and gave money to the church? He was being sent out as a missionary. Being from Cyprus, he knew the area and had a similar background to those in Antioch. When Barnabas saw all that God was doing in Antioch, true to his name, he encouraged them to remain faithful and steadfast. As people got saved left and right, Barnabas realized he needed help to disciple all these people. The Holy Spirit brought to mind a man named Saul, the passionate scholar who had gone from persecutor to preacher. So Barnabas went searching for Saul in his hometown of Tarsus. Several years had elapsed since Saul had returned to Tarsus. Barnabas found him and brought him back to Antioch to help. For a year they ministered together, teaching scripture and how it connected to Jesus. They made a great team. This is when Luke throws a little sentence in that gives us a glimpse of their lives. It says, And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. We identify now with the title Christians, and it's mostly a positive word. But the original meeting was derogatory. Little Christs. But they didn't seem to mind it. What Christian wouldn't want to be called a little Christ? That reminds me of the youth director at our church a few years ago. When he did anything in the high schools, the kids would call him the bearded Jesus dude. How cool would that be to be known by that title? Are you known for your love for Jesus? Are you so like him that co-workers and friends and family identify you as a Christian? There's another little story about the church in Antioch that shows us their character. One day, a man named Agapus showed up in Antioch and prophesied a famine throughout the world. This famine is corroborated by several outside sources. Apparently, Judea and that area had frequent famines or at least were hit hardest by dry spells. So immediately, the Antioch church took a collection for the Judean Christians and sent Barnabas and Saul to deliver it. Don't you love how this church automatically thought outside of their little circle? When they heard of a need, they moved to meet it, even though that need hadn't happened yet. What need do you know about, and how does God want you to meet it? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through His Word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. 
Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.